For our traditional four view cardiac exam, we're going to start in the parasternal long axis view. To find our parasternal window, we're going to place the transducer immediately lateral towards the sternum, somewhere between the second and the fifth intercostal space. In other words, in this area. For the parasternal long axis view specifically, the marker dot is going to be pointed towards the patient's right shoulder. After we obtain our parasternal long axis view, we're going to keep the probe in that same spot on the chest. We're just going to rotate 90 degrees so the marker dot is pointed towards the patient's left shoulder. After we've obtained that parasternal long axis and parasternal short axis view, we're going to be ready to move to our apical windows. To find our apical windows, we're going to look immediately inferior and medial to the nipple, or in other words, the spot that we'd expect the PMI to be. In the apical four-chamber view, the marker dot is going to be pointed towards the patient's left flank, immediately here. After we've obtained our apical windows, we're going to look at our subcostal windows. Our subcostal windows are obtained by placing the transducer immediately inferior to the xiphoid process. And we're going to have the marker dot again pointed towards the patient's left flank. For the traditional four view, cardiac exam, we're going to start off with our parasternal windows. Specifically, we're going to start off with our parasternal long axis view. In this view, we're going to place a transducer immediately lateral towards the sternum, somewhere between the second and fifth intercostal space, with the marker dot pointed towards the patient's right shoulder. Here, we're going to move the transducer around so that we have our best image of the right ventricle, the aortic root, the left atrium, the left ventricle, and the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. Once we've had a satisfactory parasternal long axis view, we're gonna rotate the transducer 90 degrees towards the patient's left shoulder for our parasternal short axis window. In our parasternal short axis view, we're going to move the transducer and fan it towards the apex, towards the mid portion of the left ventricle, and up towards and through the mitral valve and onto looking at the base of the heart. Once we're satisfied with our parasternal short axis views, we're going to move to our apical four chamber view. Our apical four chamber view will be obtained by placing the transducer inferior and medial to the nipple. The marker dot will be pointed towards the patient's left flank. The probe is actually going to be directed towards the contralateral scapula and will want to move the tail of the probe so that the septum is standing straight up and down. In this window, we are going to look and identify our left ventricle, our left atrium, our right ventricle, our right atrium, and our mitral and tricuspid valves. Next, we'll be ready to move towards an image in our subcostal window. This will be done by placing the transducer immediately underneath the xiphoid process. The marker dot will be directed towards the patient's left flank, similar as the orientation of the apical four chamber view. We're going to lay the transducer almost flat against the abdominal wall. Here, we're looking through the liver and identifying the right ventricle, the right atrium, the left ventricle, and the left atrium, paying particular attention to the pericardial space to identify a pericardial effusion. To image the inferior vena cava, we're going to place the transducer immediately caudal to the xiphoid process. The marker dot is going to be directed towards the patient's head, and the probe is going to be in a sagittal orientation of the body. Once we have this view, we're going to slowly fan the transducer towards the patient's right until we're able to see the IVC as it's entering into the right atrium.